Any new students today? Any new students? No, right? Okay then. So in our today's session, uh, I'm going to discuss about a new topic, uh, which is also very important um, in data structures and algorithms. Got it? So that is a recursion concept. Got it. So what exactly is the recursion? Okay. okay. So what are the important programs that are there? So all those things we'll discuss it in our today's session. Okay. Am I audible? Working on it only, Mohan. You asked for a very clear manner, no? That's why. See. But here, actually, we will be representing like this, but all of the operations, hey, no problem. Uh, yeah, 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 I got it, I got it. That's why I thought of to represent it in a very, uh, I mean, uh, what you can say, I'll tell you, uh, in a very interactive way so that uh, you people, once you, uh, I mean, read it also, you should be in a position to understand it instead of like this. I have, every time we will be seeing like this only, no, uh, like uh, the syllabus copy, but I thought of to represent it in a PPT format. That's why in, in that confusion, like uh, every topic uh, in a single separate box or something like that, I thought, yeah, yeah. So all of the topics that whatever we have mentioned here will be covering, but uh, um, See, I'll, I'm, I'm working on it, actually. Got it? So I'll send you soon with a very interactive way. Got it? But the topics that whatever we had discussed in the first session, right? All those topics will be covered for sure. Got it? Yeah, yeah. So generally, this heap, no, this is also one data structure. What we will do generally, what we will provide here is heap implementation will write it up. Okay, so this heap data structure and its implementation. And you know, we have some binary heaps out there and some operations on that binary heaps out there like insertion, deletion, okay, then um, or uh, uh, heapify concept is also there, right? Uh, okay, how to extract and how to decrease the keys here. Okay, these are the operations that we are going to perform it in heaps. Yes, so that one also I thought of to mention Okay, only just we will provide it as an implementation. And we have a um, binary heap concept, got it? And uh, some various operations like, you know, heapify also. Yeah, so I'm coming to the searching algorithms, right? These are the two searching algorithms that we are going to cover here linear search and binary search but when you go and see this one right uh, like uh, you know two pointer approach is also there okay ternary search is also there jump search is also there exponential search is also there in data searches generally we will see only these two search like linear search binary search and uh, i mean that's it no linear search and binary search these two are the searches that we'll see but when you go to the competitive platform there you will see different things, isn't it? Like ternary search, jump search, what is exponential search, how you have to do it, okay? Coming to the sorting also, almost we have mentioned all the sorting algorithms here, like uh, bubble selection, insertion, okay? Quick sort, heap sort, um, I mean, uh, along with this, we have a uh, counting sort is there, okay, then uh, Bitcoin sort is there, shell sort is there, shell sort also, I think I have mentioned, cocktail sort is there, cycle sort is there, Tim sort is there, like this different type of sorting techniques are there. When you come to, 
competitive coding platforms, there we are able to see all these different type of sorting algorithms. Got it. Yes. So, but generally speaking, in data structure syllabus, we'll see only these sortings only that whatever we have mentioned here. Okay. But considering that, uh, uh, I mean, uh, what you can say, this coding platforms, right? We need to explain all those sorts also. Okay. So, try to cover as much as more number of sorting algorithms. But these are mandatory that compulsory we are going to cover all these sorting algorithms. Got it? Along with that, we'll try to cover those uh, sorting algorithms also that what we have. Like in this, we need to add one more sort also like, you know, calculation sort and uh, this one also. Like uh, quick sort I have mentioned, no? merge sort I have mentioned. Um, cycle sort. Okay. Yeah, counting sort. This one. Counting sort technique. And coming to this recursion, we will be representing like that, but there are so many important topics that we have under recursion. Got it or not? So coming to the hashing, also the same thing. Like uh, so many hashing techniques are there, closed hashing, open hashing. Okay, so like this, so many things are there in hashings also. Coming to the tries also, same thing. Got it. Uh, so we are going to discuss about the tries properties uh, for a set of strings and we'll perform all of the operations. Like the operations are same for any data structure, like insertion, deletion, searching, searching for a particular node. If you uh, know from try or else if you want to insert or a node into a try or deletion and what are the applications advantages and disadvantages of try, try okay counting all these things will be discussed in the tries concept okay so coming to the graph uh, representations also we have two you no know, graph representations bfs and dfs breadth for search and depth for search along with this we have some shortest path i mean we can find out the shortest path using direct data cyclic graph directed cyclic graph like this and we have the prince algorithm okay and minimum spanning trees are there dixja algorithm plus skulls okay so like this uh, articulation points so many things are there here in graphs also that we will represent and coming to the backtracking algorithms the top more top most important programs are some four are there one is rat in a maze problem okay another one is night store problem another one is hamiltonian cycle and tug of war. These four are very important problems that we have under that backtracking algorithm that we are going to cover. Got it? That I'm mentioning here. Okay. Along with the programs that what I'm going to uh, give it. Got it? Yeah. So coming to this our topic, right? Uh, so coming to this, no, recursion. Okay. So the first thing is uh, uh, the main important. In the last sessions, we had discussed about the this one like um, time and space complexities right so in our today's session i'm going to discuss about the recursion concept what exactly is the recursion okay what are the important programs that are there under that recursion concept all these things i'll explain it for today's session okay so let's get into this particular topic like uh, what is the recursion first thing Okay, what are the rules for recursion? It, should, it is very simple topic and which which you have more scope to get some problems under this recursion. Got it or not? Okay, so coming to this one, recursion. So what is a recursion generally? Tell me. So what is recursion? A process in which a function or a method calling itself is known as a recursion. Say example, you have a method. Yes or no? You have a method. Then whenever, uh, I mean, uh, you have a method, if you want to call the same method again and again for a particular number of times, then what you will do inside that particular method only, you will make a call for that. Yes or no? You will make a call for that method. So that concept we can call it as recursion. Okay, so a recursive function is nothing but it is a function or it is a method in C, in C or C++. We can call it as a function. 
sorry in java we are calling it as a method okay so a recursive function is a function that calls itself understand or else the process in which a function calls itself is known as the process in which a function calls itself is known as a recursion okay so why why we are uh, calling the same function again and again because this will helps you if you understand this recursion concept it will helps you when you are working with this algorithms concept like dynamic programming divide and conquer algorithms are there no you can very easily understand those concepts once you understand this recursion got it so here what we are doing is we are solving a particular problem by repeatedly breaking it into similar smaller problems got it or not okay we are what we are doing we are solving a problem how you are going to solve a problem you are just breaking that problem into you are just repeatedly breaking that problem into similar smaller problems understand or not that is the main uh, i mean uh, usage of this recursion okay by using recursion what you can do is problems can be solved by repeatedly breaking it into similar smaller problems okay so problems can be solved by repeatedly breaking it into similar smaller problems got it or not okay so then what is the definition for recursion the process in which a function or method anything you can call okay the process in which a function calls itself is known as what itself is known as recursion or we can call it as how you can call it as a recursive function a recursive function is a function that calls itself a recursive function is a function that calls itself is known as recursion got it how it looks like very simple you can simply write a method m1 inside that inside that method right what you have to do is after writing some statements okay after writing some statements no inside that you are calling the same method again this is nothing but a recursive call understand you are calling the same method inside that method only got it next what are the rules for recursion okay now we understood why we need a recursion why we need a recursion if you have a problem if you want to i mean uh, uh, solve that particular problem then what you are going to do is you are just breaking that bigger problem into similar smaller problems and you are solving it and finally you are combining the entire result yes so this is nothing but a recursion if a function is calling itself is known as a recursion got it now what are the rules that you should follow when you are working with this recursion concept what are the rules you should follow first rule in a recursion is a function should call itself that is the first rule because whenever a function calls itself then only we will call it as a recursion right yes or no if it is not calling itself means we don't call it as a recursion it is see here repeatedly it is calling the same function isn't it or not first we will call any function or any method from the main indirectly or directly every method will be called from main only yes or no so from m1 i mean you are entering inside and you are calling the m1 method again you are calling the same method it will go back then again m1 method only called and executed then you are doing the same thing understand or not so what exactly happens the first rule is what a function a function should call itself a function should call itself that is a first rule okay second rule is there should be a base case defined base case means what say example 
I wrote a method like this M1. Inside M1, I have a call to M1 only. If we write a recursive function like this, no, then what exactly happens here? There should be a chance of infinite number of times this function will call itself. Yes or no? The from main M1 is called. Okay, it comes inside. After executing some statements, again you are calling the same function M1. Goes up. Again comes inside. Again calling. Goes up. Then comes inside. Again calling. Like this, it will go to what? Infinite loop. Yes or no? Infinite number of times a function calls itself, right? Okay. So, it should not be like that. No. To break the infinite calls, we should write one condition there where inside this method, inside that recursive function, no, you should write one condition. That condition, whatever you are writing to break that infinite number of calls, that we will call it as a base case. Understand or not? So you are writing some condition there. Under that condition only, you are putting this function call or method call. So whenever that condition gets satisfied, then only that function will be called or that method will be called. Otherwise, otherwise, if the condition doesn't get satisfied, automatically it will be skipped and comes outside of the method. Understand? Got it or not? The second rule is what compulsory? There should be a base case defined. There should be a base case defined. Got it. A base case defined. Okay. So why we need it window very simple. If we write, if we write a recursive function, right? If we write a recursive function, then oh sorry. then there should be a chance of infinite number of times a function calls itself, okay? So to break that infinite calls to break that infinite calls we should write one condition Okay, so to break that infinite calls, we should write one condition, okay, that is known as base case. Understand? This is the second rule, compulsory. First rule is what? A function should call itself. Yes, the second rule is what? Okay, function is calling itself. Is that fine? If a function is, if a method or function is calling itself, is that fine to write a recursive program? No. Compulsory, there should be a base case defined. Why? Because whenever you write a recursive function, there can be a possibility of getting infinite number of times the same method or same function gets called. To break that, we should compulsory have one condition inside that we will call it as a base case. To break that infinite calls, we should write one condition that is known as a base case. Okay, done. Is that fine? Is this two enough to write a recursive program? No. One more is required. What is that? Okay, you wrote a condition. To do this repetitive task, you wrote a condition. But somewhere, somewhere, 
that condition should get false. Yes or no? Say example, I wrote one condition saying that, got my point or not? I wrote one condition saying that if I greater than 10, it should come out. Whenever I value becomes greater than 10, it will become a false. Oh, sorry, I, I less than 10. No? I 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 10, false. Okay. Okay. Huh. So whenever I is greater than 10, it should come out for it, it should come out of the trick as you call. Okay. That means what whenever you write a condition, at some point of time, at some point of time, that condition compulsory should fail. Yes or no? Got it or not? So whatever that means what here you are making this recursive call. Yes, you are calling the same method again and again. This recursive call, whatever you are making here, okay. So this recursive call should align or should move towards the base case. It should move towards the base case so that somewhere some at some point of time that condition gets failed and it will comes outside. Understand or not? Is it clear? So recursive calls should move or align towards base case. Whatever the recursive call you are making, right? That recursive call should move towards the base case compulsory. At some point of time that will get failed, then automatically it will come outside. Okay. In this recursion, right? These are the three points that are very much important. Okay. And the another important point is actually, Whenever we use this recursion, right? You are making is you are making you are calling the same function call, right? You, you are doing the same function call right here. Yes, all these function calls, because you calls are stored in the stack area. You know, stack is a temporary memory area. Okay, and heap is a permanent memory. You know that, isn't it? So coming to here in recursion, in recursion. Function calls, or we can call it as recursive calls. Yes or no? Function calls are stored in are stored in stack area. Okay, stack memory area. Stack memory area. Fine. But this stack will have a limited amount of memory. Yes or no? This stack will have only a limited amount of memory. Got it or not? That is what the reason this stack can store only a finite number of recursive calls. Stack can store only what? A finite number of recursive calls. If it goes for infinite number of recursive calls, then there may be a chance of getting stack overflow error. Understand or not? Okay. So stack can store only a finite number of recursive calls a finite number of recursive calls <clears throat> only limited number of recursive calls only this uh, uh, i mean stack is going to store say example okay bindu in what situations we will get this stack overflow error i'll tell you the very frequently occurring issue or occurring problem in recursion is stack overflow error okay which results in the program crash so when you will get that stack overflow issue means if there is no base case defined, that means you here you have not written any base case. Here you have not written any condition at all. Got it. If you don't write any condition to break the because you call no, then automatically it will goes for infinite loop. So infinite number of because you calls will be stored into the stack memory because it doesn't have that much of memory. Obviously stack overflow issue rises. Okay, so what is the first case to get this stack overflow issue? If there is no base case in a recursion, it leads to stack overflow issue. Okay, or else you are calling the same method again and again. No, you are making a recursive call, right? Yes, so if that recursive call does not move towards the base case, 
if the tricuspid cord does not move towards the base case also there may be a possibility of getting this uh, stack overflow error okay so if the recursive call whatever the recursive call that you are going to write it here if it is not moving towards the base case also there may be a chance of getting what stack overflow error understand or not okay so let's write those points here okay so very frequently i'll give you a lot of examples for you okay to practice in the classroom not as a homework got it so we'll discuss i'll provide you one sports snippet and you people should tell now right right whether it gives a output or it goes to infinite loop like that i'll give you some code snippets okay and you just find out the solution for that got my point or not okay we'll do it so very frequently occurring very frequently occurred uh, issue or error in recursion is stack overflow issue. Stack overflow issue. Got it or not? Understand? So when this will happen, when this will happen, in two cases, this will happen. In two cases. What are those two cases? The first case is what? If there is no base case defined, if there is no base case defined, then there may be a chance of getting this stack overflow issue. If there is no base case in a recursion, right? Yes or no? It leads to it leads to stack overflow issue. Then second issue is what? Second, in, in which case you will get it again? If, if recursive call, okay? If this recursive calls, if this recursive call does not move, Okay, if this recursive call does not move towards the base case. Okay, if the recursive call does not move towards the base case, it is not moving towards the base case also. Okay, so then we will get this stack overflow issue. Are you clear till now? Are you clear? So now, yes, any doubts till now? So what is the recursion we have said? And we discussed about how you are going to write the recursion. What are the rules that you should follow when you are defining the recursive program? Got it? And what are the what type of uh, issues you will face it when you are working with this recursion? In what cases you will get that uh, issues? Everything also I discussed here. Isn't it or not? Are you clear? Third rule, right? Uh, yeah, I will explain. Okay, recursive calls should move towards the base case. Okay, I'll tell you. I'll write one example here so that you will understand these three points. Okay, now, fine. So now, the first thing, if you want to write a recursive function, right? First of all, you should identify the recursive case and you should identify the base case. Base case means what? Base condition. You should identify the base condition and its solution also. Okay, sometimes for some problems, right, we will be writing more than one base case also. Okay, so we can have more than one base condition also for a single problem. Got it. And moreover, the very important thought rule is whenever you make a recursive call every time, right, that should take us closer to the base case. That should take us closer to the base case so that you are getting the solution. Got it. So for that, I will explain you two things here. I'll, I'll take an example and I'll explain you all these three steps that what we had discussed here about the recursion. These three rules. Got it. Now, I want to print. I want to print numbers. Okay. From. Okay. Listen carefully. 5 to 5 to 1 using. Iteration and recursion. First, I'll tell you how to do it by using iteration. Iteration means what? Using loops. Using what? Using iteration means what? Using loops. Okay. I want to print numbers from 5 to 1 using iteration or using loops. Okay. First, I'll tell you that one. And then I'll go back to the recursion concept. Okay. Recursion example also I'll tell you now so that you will understand that. Okay. How can you write it? You want to print the numbers from 5 to 1, right? Okay, what is the logic you will write it here? Okay, write a function. Okay, void um, recursion one. Okay, got it or not? Rec one you have written, and here you are taking Indian variable. Okay, and here what I am doing inside this, I am writing something 
like while n greater than or equals to 1 okay while n greater than or equals to 1 the what you are going to do okay inside this sopln you are printing n value okay inside this only you wrote n minus minus that's it this is what iteration no yes so first time n greater than zero n is first time what i gave n is five i gave because i want to print the numbers from five to one right how can you root the loop how can you write the loop n five okay so five greater than or equals to one true comes inside sop ln system dot out dot print ln n value you are printing that means what is printed five printed n minus minus four again loop repeats four greater than or equals to one true control comes inside again four printed n minus minus three again three greater than or equals to one true control comes inside n value three printed n minus minus two again it goes up 2 greater than or equals to 1, true. SOP ln 2 printed, n minus minus 1. Again, loop repeats. 1 greater than or equals to 1, true. SOP ln n value 1 printed, n minus minus 0. 0 greater than or equals to 1, false. It will come outside. This is how you will print the numbers from 5 to 1 using loops. Got it? Now, print numbers from 5 to 1 using recursion using what recursion print numbers from 5 to 1 using what recursion okay so which is a very important thing now now let's try to understand i am going to write same void rec 1 okay here you can provide int n okay so now here you provide like this and here now you are writing something if n less than 1, okay, this is known as a base case. If n is less than 1, base case means what? Base condition. So, whenever that base case, see, base case becomes a false, right? Automatically, it will come outside. Compulsory, recursion means a function is calling itself. To break that, we should write one condition. Whenever that condition gets satisfied, it will come outside. Got it or not? Yes, sir. So then what you are going to write? If n is less than 1, you can write written statement here. Written. Written means what? From wherever you call this particular method, to that place it will be written. To that place it will be written. Okay. Under if without curly braces, you can write only single statement, right? That Okay. Under if without curly braces, I wrote only single statement. Okay, no problem. That means if, if I want to write multiple statements under if, you should put it inside the curly braces. But because under this if condition, I wrote only single statement. So system dot out dot print ln n value you are printing here. Now, rec1 of n minus 1. This is known as recursive call. I said no. You should write a a function should call itself. Of course, when you see here, when you see here, in the recursion, got it or not, what you are going to do, you are calling the same method or same function with a different input. Earlier, the input is 5. Yes or no? Earlier, the input is 5. N5. Now, this time, whenever again you call it, 5 minus 1, it will become what? 4. That means you are calling the same method with different input. Understand my point or not? Yes. So this condition that whatever you wrote it for breaking the recursive call, that we are calling it as a base case. Okay. And here you wrote, whenever this condition gets satisfied, it, this statement gets executed, it will comes outside of the recursive function. Got it. And moreover, after that, whatever you want to print it, that you are printing here. This is nothing but you should make a recursive call, right? For that, you should write a call. No, you should call the same function, right? This is nothing but a recursive call. Got it. So what is the third point I mentioned here? This recursive call should move towards the base case. It has to move towards the base case. That means what? Earlier it is 5. Okay, agree. Recursion of n minus 1. 5 minus 1, it is what? 4. 
again goes up. Four less than one falls. Up. Got it. Recursion. Four minus one three. Three minus one two. Two minus one one. One minus one zero. That means it is moving. First time it is four. Okay. Second time it is first time it is five. Second time it is four. Okay. Then again third time it is three. Next time it is two. Next time it is one. Next time it is zero. That means this recursive call is moving towards the base case only, na? Yes or no? See here first time input is five n five. Five less than one falls. So this return statement is skipped. S O P L N five will be printed. Recursion of n minus one. This time n is what now? Five minus one it is four. That means again you are calling the same function n. Okay. Oh, sorry. Again you are calling the same function rec one by providing the input as what? This time n is what? Four. This time n is four. Again comes inside. Four less than one. False. This written statement is skipped. S O P L N four will be printed. Okay. Then rec one of four minus one. That is what three. Four minus one. It is three. Okay. Again goes up. Again goes up. N three no. This time. Now this time. What you are doing to this particular rec one for method? You are passing three. Okay. Three less than one. False. This is skipped. N value. System dot out dot print L N. N value what? N value three will be printed. Okay, again rec one of three minus one that is two. That means again you are calling the same method with a different input. This time n is two. Two less than one false. This is skipped. It will be skipped. S O P L N uh, n value. What is that? Uh, two will be printed. Then rec one of n minus one. That means two minus one. It is one. Again loop repeats. Again this time you are calling the same method rec one by passing n value as one. One less than one false. This is skipped. S O P L N uh, S O P L N n value one will be printed. Then rec one of n minus one. That means one minus one. It is zero. That means you are calling the same method by passing n value as zero. Zero less than one true. That's why written statement gets executed. It will comes outside of the recursive method. Understand or not? So this is the base case, and whatever the recursive call you are making, you are calling here. Whatever the recursive call you are using here, that recursive call should move towards the base case. Yes, of course, it is moving towards the base case only. That means what? Earlier it is five, then next four, three, two, one, zero. It is moving towards the base case now. So whenever that base condition gets satisfied, it will comes outside of the loop. Are you clear now? Okay, fine. So, any doubts till now? Any doubts here till now? Any new student today? Fine. Yeah. So, the very important concepts are there in recursion. Like, uh, uh, we have different type of recursions also available. Like, you know, the tail recursion, head recursion, nested recursion, okay, binary recursion, or we can call it as a binary tree recursion. Okay, tree recursion also we can call it as, or else uh, we can call with, I mean, indirect recursion. We have two types of recursions. One is direct recursion, another one is indirect recursion. Under the direct recursion, we have tail, head, nested, and binary recursions. Okay, so we'll see all those now types of recursions. And we have some important programs available on that. Got it? Like, you know, uh, the factorial program, Fibonacci, printing numbers from 1 to n, okay, and uh, doing sum of n natural numbers using recursion, sum of digits of a given number, okay using recursion, greatest common divisor, okay. base conversion, decimal to binary, decimal to octal, decimal to hexadecimal conversions, okay, modulo operation, finding the length of the string, okay, finding the reverse of a string using a recursion concept, check whether the string is palindrome or not using recursion, check vowels in a string or not using recursion, finding the nth power of a number, okay, nth power, we are going to provide the number as well as we are going to provide the power also. Okay, and how to find out the very important problem here is Tower of Hanoi problem, Euclid's algorithm. That is nothing but a GCD only. Okay, then uh, we have uh, the main differences between the recursion and the iteration. When we are going to choose this recursion and when we are going to choose the iteration concept. 
okay and some more code snippets are there whenever i provide the code snippets you should tell whether which one gets satisfied okay so whether you will get the output or it will goes to infinite loop or not everything you should explain it clearly understand got it so first we'll see the types of recursions yes shall we proceed this one yes are you clear till now so types of recursion under this types of recursion we have direct recursion okay and sorry okay here tab is not working i don't know why okay let's see fine under this direct recursion we have a tail recursion okay um under this uh, uh so then next we have a head recursion okay and then we have a nested recursion next we have binary or free recursion binary recursion or we can call it as a tree recursion also okay so these are the four categories of direct recursions and the next one is uh, um, indirect recursion indirect recursion okay so i'll tell you what what is the difference between this direct and indirect recursion by writing the example got it so coming to the first one tail recursion a recursive function is tail recursive when the recursive call is the last statement that is to be executed by the function whatever the recursive call that you write it now that is the last statement to be executed by the recursion by the function then it is known as a tail recursion got it you are writing a recursive function like this no when you observe this one this is an example for tail recursion because you are writing the recursive call because you are writing the recursive call at the end as the last statement a recursive function is a tail recursive when the recursive call is the last statement that is executed by the function in this recursive function recursive call is the last statement that is executed that is what the reason this function is an example for what tail recursion got it or not next say example head recursion very simple same opposite to tail a recursive function is head recursive when when the recursive call is the first statement that is executed by the function first statement that is executed by the function then that is known as a head recursion okay so whenever the recursive call will be the first statement okay a recursive function is a recursion when the recursive call is a first statement that is executed by the function so in this head recursion right because uh, the recursive call is a first statement that is executed by the function no that's why in the head recursion first the recursive call will be made and then finally the logic of the function gets executed i'll show you the examples for all those also got it or not coming to the nested recursion the name itself telling now if the same function because you call is the argument to the function because you function so because you function is nested because you if the argument passed to it is the because you function of itself whatever the argument that you are passing right here you are sending int n no here you are sending int n na if that is the case if i pass it like this rec1 of rec1 of some n plus 2 no n plus 3 when i pass it like this what i am doing here to the same recursive function i am sending the argument as a same recursion only a recursive function is nested recursive if the argument passed to it is the recursive function of itself as yes or no 
the same recursive call when you pass it as an argument that is known as a nested recursion coming to the binary or tree recursion if if a recursive function is calling twice that's what i said if you write multiple base cases it is calling twice understand or not the recursive function call is calling for twice a binary recursion is a recursive function where the function calls itself for twice where the function calls itself for twice the best example for this binary or binary recursion is fibonacci series you know fibonacci series is there no fibonacci series is the best example for this binary tree recursion where the recursive function call is calling for itself for twice twice it is calling understand got it or not so these are the four types of recursions under this direct recursion coming to the indirect recursion when you come to this tail head nested and binary recursions in the same function itself it is calling the i mean inside this function only inside the recursive function only it is calling the same function but coming to this indirect recursion right we have two two functions void rec1 method understand or not inside this rec1 we have a call to rec2 inside rec2 we have a call to rec1 like this i just wrote this is indirect recursion first method is calling second method and the second method is calling set back to first method it is known as indirect recursion or we can call it as a mutual recursion also understand not so this is nothing but what uh, indirect recursion or we can call it as what a uh, mutual recursion mutual recursion are you clear yeah i will i will tell you indirect recursion right i'll tell you one example so you can you can do the program by using this indirect recursion only i want to print the very simple program i'll tell you first i want to print the numbers from 1 to some 20 okay if any odd number comes i should print it in odd method if any even number comes i should print it in even method yes if any odd number you want to print print it in odd method if any even number comes print it in even method so that is a, a you can you can do it by using this indirect recursion actually how can you do that yeah i'll write the program okay let me just uh, scroll down first yeah fine so how can you do that very simple in 10 is equals to 1 you write it okay now what i am doing i am writing a method like this void odd method odd method or odd number method any method name you can take it okay here what i am doing if n equals to 20 you should break it if i want to break it i'll write it like this this is the base case okay this is the base case next sopln you are printing n okay then n plus plus you increment it immediately you call even even number method immediately you call even number method got my point or not then now in the even number method what you are doing here the same logic you will do it here got it or not again here also you are writing if n equals to 20 okay what you are doing you are printing return and here sopln and you are printing n 
and here you are performing the addition operation i mean incrementing you are incrementing the n value and you can call the odd number method it is mutually calling itself odd number method from odd number method you are calling the even number so n1 1 equals 20 false this is skipped sop ln n n value 1 will be printed here n plus plus 2 now it will calls what even number method it will comes here 2 equals 20 false this is skipped sop ln 2 will be printed n plus plus 3 now it is odd number na again you are calling odd number method so even numbers are printed yet odd numbers are printed here and odd number method is calling even number method even number method is calling odd number method so this is known as an indirect recursion generally what is a recursion if a function is calling itself that we will call it as a recursion but here the function is not calling itself so one function is calling second function second function is again calling back the first function understand or not so that's why this is known as an indirect recursion or we can call it as um mutual recursion or we can call it as what a mutual recursion got my point or not is it clear to everyone is it clear to everyone yes now i'll write one more code snippet so that you can understand i'll write one more code snippet okay so here i'm taking one logic like this fun one index okay i'm taking like this fun one is one method name index argument if x equals to 0 if x is equals to 0 what i am doing return x value x value i am returning okay otherwise what i am doing return x plus fun one of x plus 1 i i wrote x plus fun one of x plus 1 understand or not i am providing the x value as 7 what is the output tell me and now first tell me this is a recursive function do you agree for that first tell me do you agree for that this is a recursive function because fun one is a function inside the fun one function only we have a, a recursive call here observe here this is a fun one recursive call so this is a recursive function okay first point clear what is the base case here tell me what is the base case tell me what is the base case here to stop the recursive function x equals to 0 is the x double equals to 0 is the exactly ruby that is what i want to tell you now okay so x equals to 0 is the base case okay fine then what is a recursive call here we have a recursive call here we have a recursive call when i provide x is equals to 7 when i provide x is equals to 7 what happens 7 equals to 0 false this is skipped written 7 plus written what is the output 7 plus fun one of 7 plus 1 x plus 1 means what 7 plus 1 that is 8 again you are calling the same method this time fun one x x value is what now 8 8 equals to 0 false this is skipped it comes to here which we are here already 7 plus is there already 7 plus is there in the place of fun one of 8 again <clears throat> x plus in the place of x now what is that x is 8 plus fun one of 8 plus 1 that is 9 again you are calling the same function like this it will goes to infinite loop infinite recursion because x never becomes a zero right x never becomes a zero yes or no is it clear or not x never becomes a zero are you clear this will gives what infinite recursion okay this will gives what infinite infinite recursion because x never becomes a zero got it or not next i'll give you one more code snippet int fun one of 
in text. Okay. Now tell me the answer for this, everyone. If x equals to 10. Okay, I have taken x as 10. Okay. And here what I am doing, I am writing written x. And here written x plus fun one of x plus 1. x plus fun one of x plus 1. And here initially I am providing x value as 7 only. Initially, I am providing x value as 7 only. What is the output? Answer for that. Yeah, we will tell. Nested recursion, right? Yes. For every uh, tail recursion, head recursion, nested recursion, and binary recursion, we will write the examples. Okay. So now this is the example for these two are the examples for tail recursion. Now, where, where you are writing, writing the recursive call at the end? Yes or no? No, 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 no. Base case is there. Here we have a base case. X is equals to 10. If X equals to 10 is the base case here. And this fun one of X plus 1 is a recursive call. Because it is written at the end, it is known as a tail recursion. Indirect recursion example we said. Now we will write head recursion and nested recursion also. Huh. Tell me please. No, little modification, I'll tell you. No, I'll tell you. Any other guess? Yeah, someone is writing. Let me just check it out. Mm, let's check it out. We'll do it. Okay, fine. Seven. Okay, first seven equals to ten false. This is skipped. What happens here? Let's check it out so that you will understand. Fun one of seven plus one is what? Eight. Got it. You are calling the same function. Yes or no? Fun one of eight. You are calling the same function. Now x is eight. Eight equals to 10 false. Then this is skipped. One minute. My system is not working. Okay. X is equals to eight. Eight, no. X eight, no. Eight equals to 10 false. This is skipped. Okay, it will come here. Already 7 plus is there. Okay, in the place of fun 1 of 8, 8 plus fun 1 of 8 plus 1, that is 9. Got it. Now, again, you are calling the same function, fun 1 of 9. This time, x is 9. 9 equals to 10, false. This is skipped. It comes here. Already 7 plus 8, 7 plus 8 plus is there. In the place of fun one of nine, we have in the place of fun one of nine, this one will be replaced. No, x is what here? Nine plus fun one of nine plus one, that is 10. Okay, done. Next, next what? Here, seven plus eight plus nine plus fun one of 10, right? Fun one of 10 means x 10 now. Modified. Yeah, yes. Your name is not visible for me. Yeah, SD. Your name will be visible for me as SD. That's why. Okay. So, fun one of 10. Last time, it is written in X value, right? You forgotten that, right? First time. Yes. So, fun one of 10. So, X value is 10, right? So, 10 equals to 10. True. Whenever it is true, it is written in what? X to the place from where this function is called. From where you are calling that function, fun one of 10, this place. In the into that place, it is written in 10. So what is the answer? 19, uh, uh, 20, 28, then 34. This is the answer. Got it or not? Yeah, last base case, yes. Last base case, it is written in x value, right? That x value will be written to the place from where that function is calling. I mean, into this place, you should place that 10. Okay. Got it. Now, now. Ah, I'll I'll ask you one more question. Okay, a, a simple question it is actually. I'll write one base uh, one recursive function here, and I'll ask you two questions. Got it? Understand? So let's write uh, int 
sorry int fun one of here i'll write int a comma int b okay and uh, what i am doing here is okay if a equals to b right okay if a equals to b you are returning a okay and here you are writing what return a plus b plus fun one of a plus one comma b minus one okay so what is the logic i wrote it here a b i have given okay if a equals to b it is returning what value a value otherwise if a is not equals to b then it is returning a plus b plus fun one of a plus one comma b minus one okay now i'll pro provide you the solutions for this let me give you the first one is fun one of you provide four comma eight okay and second one is fun one of you provide three comma eight okay first time for a and b you are providing four eight as the values okay uh, fun one of four comma eight and second time you are taking fun one of three comma eight okay fun one of four comma eight and another one is you are taking fun one of three comma eight three comma eight you are doing here got it the answer is what here the answer is what i mean what you have to check it here is whenever you ask, apply this fun one of four comma eight okay you apply this fun one of four comma eight for this and you give these values also fun one of three comma eight also understand which when you apply these two options to this particular recursive function when it is giving the infinite recursion when it is giving infinite recursion that is what my question if you if you give 4 8 ma if you give 4 8 as input values to a and b is that giving recursive function i mean rec infinite recursion or else whenever you provide a 3 comma 8 is that giving recursive i mean infinite recursion that you check it out which one Fun one of uh, A and B should both be odd or even, otherwise infinite. Yes. Yes. So, what is happening here? Okay. So first time, let's take this one, four comma eight. Fun one of four comma eight. So first time, what exactly happens? Four equals to eight falls. So a four plus b eight plus what? Fun one of fun one of a plus one that is five comma uh, b minus one eight minus one that is seven. Okay, you're calling this one. Okay, again, again what? Uh, five seven na. Loop repeats uh, five uh, equals to seven false. This is skip. It comes here. Four plus eight plus as usual there. Again, A plus B. This time A plus B is what? Five plus seven plus. Got it not? Five plus seven plus. Fun one of. A plus one is what? A plus one is uh, five plus one. That is six. Huh. So B minus one. That is seven minus one. That is six. Okay. You are calling the same function again. You're calling the same function again, right? Got it. Next this time. Again, A6, B6. Okay. So, A6, B6 in the sense what? 6 equals to 6, true. Then it will return only one time A value. Return A. A6, B6. If 6 equals to 6, A equals to B. 6 equals to 6, true. That's why it will return what? 
ए वैल्यू ए वैल्यू इज वॉट सिक्स आई मीन इन द प्लेस ऑफ दिस एंटर फन वन ऑफ सिक्स का मा सिक्स इट विल रिटर्न सिक्स ओनली सो दट मीन्स वॉट इज द आंसर हियर फोर प्लस एट प्लस फाइव प्लस सेवन प्लस एंड फन वन ऑफ सिक्स का मा सिक्स इज वॉट सिक्स इक्वल सिक्स टू दट वाई इट रिटर्न सिक्स ए वैल्यू सिक्स विल बी रिटर्न सो वॉट इज द आंसर हियर फोर प्लस एट इज ट्वेल्व ट्वेल्व प्लस फाइव सेवन आई मीन सेवनटीन प्लस Uh, twelve seventeen. Then here um, what I wrote here twenty four thirty. Got it. Understand. Next, next case. See the next case. In the next case, what happens? Three eight. First time you are passing three eight right three equals to eight false this is skipped so three plus eight plus okay so fun one of uh, so a plus one that means three plus one it will becomes four comma um then next one is what eight minus one that is seven okay eight minus one that is seven okay then next fun one of four comma seven four equals to seven false this is skipped so same three plus eight plus again what four plus seven plus Okay, four seven plus fun one of fun one of what is that? Four plus one it is what five comma seven minus one seven minus one it is what b seven no seven minus one it is six. Okay, done. Now, now next what five six five equals to six false. This is skipped. So then next three plus eight plus four plus seven plus in the place of fun one of five comma six what is placed? Same five plus six plus fun one of a plus one five plus one it is six comma b minus one six minus one it is five so then never this a b becomes equal here so in this case automatically it will goes to what it will goes to infinite recursion so next time fun one of it will becomes what seven four next time eight three next time nine two never a b never becomes a equal got it so it will goes to what infinite recursion are you clear so this first one giving the answer and second one is not giving the answer it leads to infinite recursion got it so like this we have so many things like uh, you know um, so like uh, i'll be providing some uh, uh, some other uh, examples like this okay and what you have to do is you should find out whether it is giving the proper output or not uh, and what it is providing so ne next i'll give you one more code snippet so in that code snippet what i'll do is uh, i'll provide the input values to a and b and i'll ask you whether that particular code snippet is giving sum of all numbers from a to b or if it is performing product of a a and b okay which one it is performing we should find out okay and uh, so this is what and uh, next one is um, we'll write other examples also after practicing this type of uh, code snippets first uh, for another uh, uh, 10 to 15 or something some 10 code snippets once we practice this no we'll go for the example programs okay got it so this recursion concept will be continued in the tomorrow session as usual we'll finish it off all these code snippets and then we'll go for the next one that is all the recursive programs list I, I, I told you now just now, like factorial, Fibonacci, uh, GCD, Euclid, reversing a string, everything, so many programs, like some 10 programs, all those things will say it. Okay. Yeah. So that's all for the today's session. Got it. And uh, if any new students are here, you can speak with me if you want. Otherwise, uh, we'll meet in the tomorrow session as usual. Uh. Oh, thank you so much, Mohan. Okay. Now it's too late for you, right? 11 o'clock. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So tomorrow's session is also a very nice session where we are practicing this type of... And I'll... You see, here I am providing the code snippet input, right? And you are pro telling me whether it is giving an output or if it is infinite loop or not, infinite recursion or not. But in the next tomorrow session, I'll provide you a snippet like this and I'll provide you some fill in the blanks also there. So that you should fill there something for getting that particular input, output. Got it. Like that some code snippets will practice tomorrow. 
and then we'll go for the actual programs and we have recursion versus iteration also and when to use the recursion when not to use the recursion in what situations you should not prefer recursion concept all those things we'll see tomorrow okay yeah thank you we'll meet in the tomorrow session at same time hello Bye. hello ah yeah please yeah hi bindu i have some doubt regarding the course yeah please okay so i want to know like uh, you said uh, we will cover 150 questions in this course so i want to ask uh, that includes assignment also or it is just for the class mm, which one includes that 100 to 150 yeah no 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 it will be explained in the classroom okay so all uh, you mean like uh, the, that is the number which will be explained in the class right yes okay See, these are all the things that we are practicing here, no? Yeah. Yes. Don't include all this. Yeah, yeah. Except, yeah, this is uh, just uh, the course. This is snippet. purely related to the course related topics, right? If I take a recursion concept, here I am going to cover not less than some 15 programs. Don't include that 15 recursion, recursion programs there. Those are all the competitive coding platform programs. Got it. So those are all totally different. I mean, say example, take 100 to 150. In one class, right, uh, we may practice, sometimes we may practice three. Depends on the, I, I'll show you some coding. Uh, I have that, I think I have one minute. I'll just show you. That lead code list is there, no? Let me just open it. Yeah. So like this, implement Q using two stacks. This is one problem. Where you have to implement Q concept using two stacks. Got it? So then next one is what? Stack minimum problem. I'm just showing you. Okay. So because you're asking, right? So those problems are totally different not including this one see generally if you go for stack we are going to implement the stack using array representation and linked list representation that you don't include it but except that almost 100 to 150 programs will practice in the competitive coding platforms okay okay got it okay, and like okay. we, uh, do will we cover uh, like internal working of hash map and all those interview questions also yes yes when hash, hashing concept is there, no, there we are working on, we are going to discuss about how that hash map works. That is one of the very important, very frequently asking question, isn't it? Yeah. So entire yeah. things also we'll discuss it. Okay. And okay. one more thing, like, uh, uh, do you provide like in this course mock interview or like placement assistance? Yes, that entire thing will be taken care of by Mr. Ashok. Okay. So okay. how up uh, to up to the course, whatever the course, um, okay, and the topics, okay, discussion. I mean, all the computer coding platform problems, discussion, interview questions. All these things will be taken care of by me, and the mock interviews, placements, assistance, everything will be taken care of by Mr. Ashok. So when should we contact it? Contact him like after completing yeah. the course, or he'll be there in our WhatsApp group itself. I'll speak with him, and I'll let you know. Okay, okay, fine. Okay, yeah. yeah. And this is another problem. See here, we what, what is the problem here? Uh, we should use a single array to implement three stacks like this. So these are all some lead code under hacker rank programs only. Okay, so how you are going to write the program for this? That we will see it in our day-to-day -day session. Okay, and we will get uh, notes for each program, right? Like the... Yes, yes with the most optimal approach, like with the time, uh, reduced time complexity, right? Yes, everything, notes and discussion on that, everything will be given. Okay, okay, yeah, I got it, thank you. Okay, yeah, no problem. Uh, in this course, Mohan, are you asking? Separately, right? Yes, of course, but at present only two, three classes I'm taking. In future, if I plan, I'll let you know for sure.
we'll conduct some free workshops also on that. We'll conduct some free workshops on that also. Um, so like if if we plan no, we'll let you know for sure. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Have a good day.